So if you want to create an IMM brush, the first thing to do is make sure that whatever you're making is relatively low polygons. So here I have a very, very simple stitch and I've created a series of different types of stitch, which we can just cycle through here. And you can see that they're all quite low polygon. There's nothing really um, scary about any of them. Some of them are, are loops. Um, or these ones are not intended to be used as a curve, but the rest of them will be running along a curve. So the way Z brush works is with an IMM brush is that if you turn on curve mode in the stroke palette up here, then you can draw a curve out and it will take whatever object you have here and will work from the bottom up. So if you're in a front view, when you first capture this brush and you need to be in a front view when you look at this, this is what I would like the curve to be, but I want this as a seen from the top, if I was to draw this curve out, this is what it would look like. And it will just repeat from the bottom up and then repeat from the bottom up all the way along the curve. So as we go through these different objects, you can see this will tile this way, horizontally. This one will tile vertically. Um, and we'll see some of these, this will tile vertically. They'll all tile vertically, basically. Um, so these are the different patterns that I'm trying to get. So some of these brushes, uh, when I was creating them, I use an array mesh so you can see that this is a very strange shape and um, but the idea is that if you go down to array mesh and you turn on transpose press w and then y so with y turned on you've got the gizmo so now you can just click anywhere in your model and then hold down shift to constrain it to an up down view and now with two on repeat i can just move this up and see what this would look like when i get to a certain stage so now this is overlapping nicely. So I can continue to edit this. I can hold down Control and Alt and mask this. But if I try and move this now, you'll see that I'm moving the transposed version, the array mesh. So if we need to go back to editing the original object, I'm gonna press Y again to go back to the normal 3D gizmo. And this will allow us to move this and see what effect this would have on the other object. So this is what I did here. I basically took these objects and did this until I found shapes that actually combined nicely. Once that was ready, I turned off array mesh and then I know that this shape is going to tile along the curve vertically. So as we go through these shapes, you can see some of these are not intended to be used for a curve. This is just an insert brush. This would be used as a normal insert brush. So when you're using this, all you need to do is turn curve mode off and that will just make this a single insert. As we go through, there are various types. These are just buttonholes. Um, and you'll see that these are all lower as with the intention that um, when you're finished, you're actually going to use subdivision. So either use dynamic subdivision by pressing D or, done, or real subdivisions by dividing it here. So as I go through these sub the sub tools, and you can do that just by pressing the down arrow and the up arrow, you can press D to see what this would look like and go through. So once you've created them all, the names that you have on them is important. So once you have that, now when you press brush, you can say create and then create an insert multi-mesh brush. You'll see now that the names of these all match up with the names of the objects down here. And we have one object for each, each one. So the first thing I need to do is turn on curve mode because I want this to be a curve brush. And I'm just going to go to a piece of cloth here to start using this. And I have the very first brush enabled. So as I click on this, you'll see that looks fine. I can make it smaller and then just click on the curve again to see what that would look like smaller. And maybe this could be a lot smaller again, actually. And also you can see that it's not actually going into the surface. So this is controlled in the depth. So if you go to brush and we'll dock this over here and we go down to depth and we can change this. So if this is lower, when I click on this now, you'll see this will be embedded slightly in the the surface that you draw on, whatever that surface might be. So as we go up the curve, you'll see that that will match that surface. Now this will stay, I'm going to open up the modifiers as well because there's certain other things. This is not a tri-parts brush. You'll see that when we made this, we only had one poly group and it's important that all of these objects, you'll, you'll notice all have one poly group because we're not using tri-part curve brushes in this case. So with this, you'll see the triparts is on. So I'm gonna turn that off because we don't need it on. It won't cause a problem being there really, but it's worth turning it off. But you'll notice that the depth has changed for this brush. And as I go through to the next brush, you'll see this turns back on again. So we need to turn this off for each variation of this. 
that you're going to use because each of these can have different settings. So for example, on this one, uh, maybe I want the depth to be a little bit different. So I can change this and then click on the curve again to update. Uh, maybe that's a little bit too low. So I'm just going to hit set this to five and click again. That seems better. I can click draw a new curve and this is working. Pre shift F to see that. So if I don't like the spacing of that, that's controlled on the stroke. So I'm going to take the stroke menu and also dock this down here. And it has curve mode enabled, which is giving us a value of one. If I want these to be further sp spaced out, I can just change this and then click on that again. And sometimes this will happen. It will kind of ruin it for you. So you, you may have to draw the stroke out again. But you can see that these are much further spaced apart than they were before. So you can determine that yourself by clicking on this. And if this does happen, um, just undo and maybe draw the stroke out again um, until you see what you like. So if that's the spacing, the curve mode controls the spacing. Uh, and as we go through this, we can set that for all of these. You'll see that this goes vertically. Um, so the stroke will tile this way. Uh, and we can set the depth for each of these. We need to set the depth for each of these because it will differ depending on the geometry that we have. So. I've already done that for all of these brushes. One thing I would say is that when you get down to these brushes here, I don't want these to be tiled along because these are just buttonholes. So in this instance, with this brush active, I'll just turn curve mode off and that will allow me to just drag these in and I can change the depth. Same for this. If you have an individual stitch that you want to put in somewhere, you can do that as well. And the usual applies that if you have this stitch and you want it to be consistently sized, start dragging it out and hold control and it will make it the size of the red circles. So that will allow you to have consistency, consistently sized uh, brushes that you can rotate if you're going around a corner, for example. Um, and then when we go back to stroke, we just turn curve mode on to select any other brush and draw that out. You notice with this one that these are not attached. So for this brush, the tri parts needs to be off. The weld parts needs to be on. So when I do this again, you'll see that this now welds them together and we now have a nice stroke and we can make that smaller or bigger as needed. The hoop brush, you can see that the spacing does not work here. So for this, we have to modify this, the curve step to, I think it's something like 0.6. We click on that again and now that's working a lot better for us. There actually, the depth is still wrong on this one. I'm going to sink that into the surface a little bit more and we click on that. This is closer to what we're looking for. Uh, and then the last one, again, it needs to be attached. So I'm going to turn off dry parts, turn on weld points. And while it is welding it, it's kind of bending it to get there. So if I press shift D to turn off the dynamic subdivision, you can see that there was and actually if I turn off the weld points, you can see on the curve, these aren't close enough to each other. So we want to change the distance, the curve mode distance to maybe 0.8. So they get closer together. Uh, maybe 0.7. Well, I've actually, I've overshot it. Sorry, it'd be 0.9. Something like that is very close. So when we do turn on weld points and we click on this, it's not going to be a huge difference and that should smooth nicely and press D to get dynamic subdivision. So that's it. This is the brush. If you do take any of these brushes and you decide you don't like the spacing of them, you know, just feel free to go down here and change your curve step, increase that. Uh, like I said, you may have to re redo the stroke if that's what you're looking for. Um, it's totally up to you uh, how close or how far apart these things are. Having done all this, don't forget to save your brush. Just go to brush and save as. Before you do that, maybe enter a brush credit where you can enter your name and maybe a link. Uh, and then from there, just go brush, save as, save it somewhere and you're done. Hope you enjoy the brushes and if you do use them on something, please do let me know. I'd love to see anything that they get used for. I'm giving them out for free as usual on the Gumroad page. And uh, so yeah, if you like this and you want to see other future brushes I might make in the future, consider subscribing and commenting below. Cheers. Bye.